welcome back. So today we're out at the range with the new Beretta APX 9mm pistol. This is a polymer frame, a chassis type pistol, very similar to what SIG kind of pioneered with the P320. So it has an interchangeable serial number chassis and it holds 17 rounds in its magazine. The handgun's very unique looking. We saw this gun show up on Instagram and Facebook and other social media sites a couple of months ago because Beretta rolled the guns out in different countries before they announced them here in the United States. April 15th is when these guns are supposed to be made available to the consumer market out there so you guys can run out and buy one. They have an MSRP of 575, but I would expect that to be something less when you actually go to the gun shop to buy one. Typically, MSRP is set very high, and what the actual retail price is is gonna be closer to 500 bucks. If that's true, it's gonna be very competitive with other handguns on the market, such as the Glock, the M&P, the XD, the new P10C, and all that other stuff. So it's gonna be competitively priced. So what sets this handgun apart? We're going to talk about that in this video. Now, as I mentioned, the gun does hold 17 rounds. This magazine, as far as I know, is not compatible with any other Berettas on the market, so I think you're going to have to buy specific magazines for the gun. I don't have a price point for the magazines themselves. Let's fire off 17 rounds here really quick, and then we'll delve into the APX. Let's go over some of the key features of the APX. Now, first of all, probably the 800 pound gorilla in the room would be the slide serrations. When I first saw these in pictures, I really didn't understand them. I thought it was Beretta trying to do some crazy styling and it didn't really look all that functional. Having had this pistol now for about a month and being able to shoot it, I've come to realize that these very aggressive texture, or the very aggressive texture of these serrations actually serves a purpose. You can grab this gun pretty much anywhere and get enough traction to work the slide. So while they look stylish, or some people will say they don't like the style, they actually are quite functional. They give plenty of purchase on the slide just about anywhere you want to grab it. And so in essence, what you have are slide serrations that run the full length of the gun. I think that's really nice. The gun is mostly ambi, and when I say mostly, there's a new movement to make truly ambi guns, and by that I mean they have ambi slide stop slide releases and magazine releases, meaning you don't have to switch your magazine release around. While the APX has an ambi slide stop, as you can see here on the right side of the pistol, I can release the slide with my index finger, or of course I can release the slide over on the other side as well. And conversely, you can lock it open too by pushing up. So it has an ambi slide stop, but the magazine release is something that you can turn around yourself. It doesn't require you to send it in for service, as some other pistols do. With a simple punch, you can reverse the magazine release, so if you are a left-handed shooter, then the gun becomes a left-handed shooter's gun. So that's pretty nice. The gun does have three-dot sights, and what you'll notice is, first of all, the sights use their own proprietary dovetail, so there aren't existing aftermarket sights for the gun just yet, but the front sight has a really big white dot and then the rear has smaller dots, and Beretta has made this front dot so big in an effort to speed up sight acquisition. The gun also features, of course, a polymer frame and no external safeties, but this, this grip strap right here that comes all the way around with this styling, you can replace this, and we'll show you how to do that when we do the field strip of the gun, so this whole back strap right here is replaceable. The gun to disassemble has the option to release the striker without pulling the trigger. This pin has to be driven out to remove the chassis system, the internal chassis system. However, what looks like a pin right in front of it is actually a button. So the tip of a 5.56 round or the tip of a pin or anything like that can be used to decock the pistol by simply pushing that button. Again, we'll show that in more detail when we field strip the pistol and go through its internal components. But the takedown lever is a little bit different than something like an M9, but your takedown lever is right here. It does require you to push it from the opposite side of the pistol. You push here, and once you push it across, then you can rotate down 
that disassembly lever. And again, we'll talk more about that when we get into the field stripping. The front of the, the slide has kind of an angular cut to it. You can see how the barrel protrudes from the slide. It sets very low in the hand. It has an undercut right here, which is fairly deep, allowing you to get your hand deeply onto the gun. As a standard modern style trigger, with the internal safety of the trigger, that little dingus I like to call it, right there in the middle of the trigger. And in essence, what that is is a drop safety, guys. It does feature a metal 17 round magazine. We have some Fiocchi 9 millimeter loaded into it. That's what we're shooting out here this afternoon. So you have 17 rounds per magazine, 18 rounds when you top the gun off. So 18 rounds in a service sized handgun. This is not a compact, this is a full size handgun. I don't know when they'll release a compact version. I'm sure they will. They have with their other pistols. But so it is a full size handgun, but you'll notice that the grip is just the right size for 17 plus one, which gives you ample firepower if you just wanna carry the gun by itself with no spare magazine. 17 rounds should get you out of trouble, but a lot of folks still like to carry spare magazines. If I have 15 or more rounds, I'm content. The magazine, the magazine itself is flared on the bottom on the floor plate. So if you have to strip that magazine out, you have a way to do that. So it's very flared out right there on the bottom of the magazine. All right, let's run some more ammunition through the gun here really quick, and then let's field strip it and see what it looks like on the inside. The gun shoots really flat, I really like the way that it shoots. It's going to be some stiff competition for the other guys on the block right now. Before we take the APX apart, let's get some basic weight information on it. So right now I have the gun with an empty magazine in it. There's no round in the chamber. And let's see how much she weighs. 28.5 ounces empty with the magazine inserted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the empty magazine out. I have 17 rounds of 124 grain Fiocchi ammunition loaded. And we'll see how much the gun weighs, the loaded magazine, and it looks like it weighs 35.8, 35.7 ounces, somewhere right in between, 35.8. All right, so it gives you guys an idea of what the gun weighs, both loaded and unloaded. All right, so now let's field strip the gun really quick. There's two ways that you can field strip the gun. First of all, you can do it with pulling the trigger, or conversely, you can release the striker with this button back here. I'm gonna show you how to do it by pulling the trigger. First, we're gonna make sure that the weapon's clear, lock it to the rear, show clear, make sure the weapon's empty. I'm gonna let the slide go home. And now it, I'm gonna have to push this button with my thumb. It's a pretty heavy spring. I've seen some folks complain about this disassembly method and I don't know what they're complaining about. It's actually pretty intuitive once you get used to it. But you're gonna push this button with your thumb and that's gonna release this lever so it can come down like that. Now you're gonna to wanna to hold the lever in this position with either your thumb or your finger, but now I'm gonna pull the trigger with my other finger and watch what the slide does. It just pops forward, okay? Now you can remove the slide from the frame. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together and show you the other way to disassemble it. Using, and when you put it back together, all you have to do is put the slide on the frame, pull the slide sharply to the rear, and that lever will automatically lock itself back together. Okay, all right, the second way, now the weapon's cocked, all right, so it's fully cocked. What I'm gonna do now is slightly bring the gun out of battery, just barely break it open, and now I'm gonna take the tip of a bullet and I'm gonna push this little button right here, okay? Right in front of that bullet's where we're gonna push. This is a pin and this is actually the striker release. When I push this, it'll click. Might not have been able to hear that, it's a very faint click, but now, the gun is not is decocked. If I pull the trigger, nothing's happening with the striker, okay? Now I can push this button with my thumb, rotate this lever down, and when I do it, the slide pops forward again and just comes right off the frame. So you have two options with the gun with regards to disassembly. 
I'm not going to take the chassis out because I don't have a punch with me here, but you would punch this pin out, rotate this to, down to the takedown position, and you could pull this takedown lever out, and then your chassis would lift out of the receiver a lot like a SIG P320. You can buy different lowers for the gun, different colors, different sizes, whatever. You can easily do that with this new chassis, modular chassis system in the APX. You'll notice that you have nested springs here. You have a recoil spring riding inside of a recoil spring. Take your guide rod and spring out. It is captured, so you know some guns you have to line the spring up and push it and kind of be a little bit cumbersome or, or cumbersome. This is very easy to take apart, and then it's a standard Browning type action. So you can just lift the barrel up and out of the slide like that, and that's fully disassembled. To reassemble the gun, just reverse the process. Drop the barrel in. Take your recoil spring, set it inside, pop it down, put the slide on the frame, and now the gun is fully reassembled. You'll also notice one more thing. When I pull the trigger on the gun, right here on the top of the frame, you're going to see a little pin pop up. I'm not sure why Beretta did that. Um, well, all I know is that's part of, when you're pulling this, it's releasing the striker so it can move forward. Think of the Glock. If you're familiar with the Glock, you have a little plunger inside the slide. Right now, with the trigger forward, there's a physical block keeping the striker from going forward. When you pull the trigger, it moves that block out of the way. And for whatever reason, Beretta's having this pin protrude from the top. The only problem I can see that causing down the road is if you want to machine cut this for an RMR, you're going to have to deal with that little pin sticking out. Otherwise, I'm not sure what it's there for. You're going to know the trigger's been pulled. You're not going to need that pin to tell you the gun's going to go bang. So anyway, that's it. Now, the next thing we're going to show you guys is how to remove the back straps and how to replace them. When you buy your Beretta, it's going to come in a box like this with the Beretta logo on it. Inside you're going to find a Beretta lock. The pistol will have a magazine in it. You'll have a second magazine, your back straps, which we're going to talk about next, and then a magazine loader. Also under here, when you lift up this foam, you'll find your owner's manual and some other paperwork. So that's how the gun comes shipped. Go ahead and take the pistol out. And now we're going to talk about how to change the back strap on the APX. First, I'm going to go ahead and clear the weapon, make sure it's empty, and now I'm just going to field strip it like I normally would. I'm going to do it my way, which requires me to pull the trigger, and it just pops right apart. I'm going to set the slide to the side. Now down inside here, there's a little metal tab that you're going to probably want to use a punch to get at. And it's so dark, I can't really show you what that little tab looks like. I can try to shine a light in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, if Sam can even zoom in far enough, but I'll try to get a picture of it. So what I need to do is push that little metal tab down and over, and then this little metal bar, which you can see the bottom of right here, will start to come out, and that's gonna release the back strap. So let me get in here with a flashlight really quick. And then once you push down on it, this little metal tab right here starts to pull out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it like this, stick my punch underneath it, actually through this way. I'm just going to pull it the rest of the way out. All right? And that's that little metal tab. Now, it has to go in a certain way, which shouldn't be too hard to do, because if you put it in backwards, it's actually going to keep you from inserting your magazine. So it's fairly easy to remember which way it goes in. Now, once that little metal bar is out, you can just pull the back strap away from the gun, it'll pull off. See how I just pull it away? So we have a couple of different back straps. The back strap I took off is the back, back strap that comes with the gun, and I think it's the medium-sized one. That looks like it's probably the most narrow. 
And then the last one, you'll notice, has a curvature to it. And what this is going to do is increase the length of pull. It's going to increase the distance from the very back of the back strap to the face of the trigger. So if you have really large hands and you want to increase this distance right here, this back strap is going to be the one that's going to fit your hand the best. They all actually feel pretty good, but I've kind of grown used to using just the back strap that came on the gun. I'll pry this one off here. So I'm going to put it back on. Yeah, they're all marked. So this one is marked medium. This is the one that came off the gun originally. This one is marked small. And this one's marked L for large. So they all have little marks right here. They'll tell you what size the grip panel is. So it takes all the guesswork out of it. Put it back together. You just put it back on like this. Take your metal bar and just push it all the way in until it stops. And now it's locked into place. Put the gun back together. Actually, I got to rotate this down here really quick. It's kind of cold out here today, guys. And you're all done. So it's relatively easy to do and does, at least with me and my old eyes, require a flashlight and a simple punch, but you shouldn't be changing your back straps all that often, but it is a very secure method for attaching the back strap. There's quite a few features about the APX I really like. First of all, it's the slide serrations. Aesthetically, some of you guys might not like them, but functionally, I've never seen slide serrations that are actually this good. At any point on the pistol, I can grab it and get a hold of the gun. They're almost like little cheese graters. They're very deep with very sharp edges on them. Not enough to cut your hands, but enough to give you, no matter where you grab it, enough purchase on the slide to run the gun. And basically, you have slide serrations that run the full length of the gun very positive attribute. Now, Beretta was also keeping in mind that a lot of folks like to have a rear sight that has a slight edge to it so you can actually snag it on clothing to do operations where if you want to draw the uh, charge the weapon by dragging it down clothing, you can do so. You can see how the gun actually will stick on my pants and I can actually get it to snag in chamber or clear a malfunction. The other thing I really like about the APX is the fact that Beretta advertises the slide stop also as a slide release. They call that out and say it can be used as both. That's important to me because when I reload a pistol, I typically take the magazine, insert it into the gun, then take this supporting thumb, bring it up, and hit the slide release, then go to my grip. That's just how I reload guns. That's my preferred way of reloading guns. And I like the fact that Beretta acknowledges that and actually says that's a feature of the gun. Now, one of the other features of the APX I like is you'll notice I'm shooting the glove, I'm shooting the gun with a gloved hand. The trigger guard on this pistol is very large. One of the reasons I stopped carrying the Glock 19 was because even with the mechanics gloves I have on today, when I went to put my finger on the trigger, the trigger guard was so small it started to slightly push back on that trigger and I didn't feel safe doing that. You'll notice I have a lot of airspace here with the APX. Overall, it's a very shootable little gun. I think I got one more magazine here in my pocket. And that's the other thing, 100% reliability. I've had this gun for a little over a month now, and I've been shooting it the entire time. I've been letting my friends shoot it. Everybody seems to like the way the gun feels and the way the gun shoots. I would say that even though the trigger is not quite as good as, say, a P10C, a VP9, or a PPQ, it's a little bit plasticky feeling, but still a very good trigger, much better than, say, the first generation Smith & Wesson M&P trigger. It's got a good trigger on it. I'm sure aftermarket will pick up for the gun 
if it becomes popular and you might find Zev triggers or something down the road, but you're just not going to need it. Out of the box, the gun has a very usable trigger. It's better than the Glock. It's better than an M&P. Well guys, it's time to wrap things up this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed this first look at the new Beretta APX 9mm pistol. As I mentioned earlier in the video, it's a nice new chassis type pistol, so you can buy lowers. I've seen pictures on the internet of green and FDE. This is of course black. I'm sure Beretta's going to come to market with some other lowers and perhaps a third party market will step in with their own lowers because the serialized part is a chassis inside the polymer lower. The handgun comes to market with an MSRP of 575, which when it actually gets to dealers near you, you're probably going to pay closer to maybe $500 for the handgun. Overall, I think the ergonomics are spot on. The gun shoots very nice, it's accurate, it's extremely reliable, and I think it's a great entry into the striker fired market for Beretta. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions down below. I do try to stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer the questions you guys may have. Also, please swing by and check us out at Copper Custom. If you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, that's the best possible way to do so. And if you haven't already, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken the web's best content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and we will... Talk to you guys soon.